Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. As soon as Izzy and I are done with our walk, I am going to extol the virtues of a digging bar. Cindy keeps the digging bar in the horse's run-in, so on our way back from the walk, We'll stop by there, which is perfect because I want to show Jason Crocker not only some stuff about how to use a digging bar and why you need one, but I want to show him some stuff about post and beam foundations and how to fix the one that he has. All right, we're finished with our walk and we are in the West Dry Lot. 80 mile right there, horse one, horse two, that's Mark and Blue, but here is the run-in, and I'm not sure where that is, here it is. This is a digging slash tamping bar, this is a six footer and my eye level comes right to here. Um, if you live in a rocky area, especially like up on top of a ridge like we are, kind of hard to tell, but that drops way to heck down. We are near the top of the ridge. It goes a little bit higher up that way. But like this soil right here, because we cut into the side of the hill to make a flat spot, about half of it up to about right there is just solid giant boulders and then this half is all the rocks that were cut out of that and put over here to make a flat spot there's rocks everywhere in another video i'll show you how you can pound t-posts into this stuff not easy but there's a trick to it but anyways when you're digging with a post hole digger or an auger Augers can be really dangerous if they hook on a on a rock and it's a powerful auger. It can really mess up your back, so I'd be careful with that. If you're using like a post hole digger, when you get to a rock, almost always it's it's sticking into the side of the hole. And what you do, these things are heavy as all get out. You can toss it down into the hole and ju you just dig out behind the rock and use this to pry it until you get that rock out. Then you lift the rock out of the hole and start digging again. But if you're using the, the type post hole digger, um, what is that called? Um, clamshell. If you're using a clamshell, you toss this down into the hole and it, like I said, it's, it's about 50 pounds, I think. No, it's not 50 pounds. It's, it's really heavy, though. You toss it really hard down into the hole. You do that several times, and then you wedge, and you get it really nice and loose down there. Then use the clamshell to get the dirt out. Don't try digging the hole with the clamshell. This will bust up the rocks. If you hit a rock with this, a uh, smallish rock, it'll just bust it right in half. So this is how you dig in rocky ground. Get yourself a digging bar, and I like it with the tamper on. When you go to fill the hole, if you're not putting concrete in there, well even if you are and you don't have it filled to the top, you use this other end to tamp it down. Real nice and heavy and concentrated so it'll tamp it really good. We've also used this to put the tracks back on a skid steer and the girls use it out here to bust up frozen horse poop off the ground when they're clearing the, clearing the dry lot here. So lots of uses for it. There really are a lot of uses for it. This one is a true temper and I can't, I, I believe I bought this online because I couldn't find it locally. But that 
is an invaluable tool for digging holes in rocky ground and this is just some information for Jason Crocker who had some issues digging holes and I think his foundation might be a little too shallow which could cause his little tiny house to tip over in a big wind. These right here are posts here. These are ground treated posts. They're just three together and they go down six feet and they sit on a pad. I'll put the pads on screen so you can see what they look like. They sell them at most of the big box stores. So these go down six feet and we had to use uh, an auger on a skid steer to get through this stuff. There's no way we could have dug these by hand and not. We had somebody that did that down at the end of the road there, dug, dug his holes by hand. And it, it took him roughly a day per hole. Didn't want to do that. So, but on, in Jason's case, he already has the foundation set up, so he's going to have to dig around each one of them, them posts going into the ground, dig it deeper, and fill that with concrete. And uh, I'll show you that later, but connect the post to the concrete. Otherwise, his little tiny house is probably going to tip over if he gets a good wind. I mean, this, we have, what do we have here? Six, seven posts each one six feet into the ground that's for the frost but it's also a good idea to have it as far into the ground as possible and if they're not that far you really need some concrete down there and a way to attach the post to the concrete so that if you get a real a big wind it's not gonna but it's not gonna shift the the center of gravity on your place and tip it over I'll show you what I'm talking about with the uh, with the posts, how to connect them to the concrete. I'll show you over in the breezeway project. As soon as I pet this horse a little bit, we have scheduled for tonight. We have zero degrees and 14 mile an hour winds. So I believe with wind chill that comes to 30 something below. I'll put it on screen. But tomorrow is even worse. Tomorrow during the day, it's only supposed to get up to, I think, 7. And then overnight, we're supposed to get 14 to 18 below with 12 mile an hour winds. And that might be, oh, I don't know, 50 below or so. Maybe even more than that with the wind chill. No, honey, that's just salt. So we got to get the horse what you do with the horses we'll probably blanket them tomorrow night because we have uh, insulated blankets but you just give them more food and then they'll, they'll chow that down and them burning up the digesting the hay they generate tons of heat i mean they've been through winters way colder than this and there's no problem with that i mean animals are designed to live outside Okay, let me go get a, a 4x6 prop, and I'll show you what I'm talking about over in the breezeway. Okay, this right here was one of the legs from the shower. Let's see if I can show that. It was attached to the back of the barn there. There's a video of me taking it out. And the main reason I had to take it out was because the, the main part of the shower was dug in oh i don't know it was, it was below the frost line so it was well supported and it was attached to the building i added a tiny little platform it only had this one post and this was from something else so it was kind of short so i couldn't put it far enough under the ground i couldn't get it below the frost level and the reason i had to tear out the shower was because this you can still see the, the deck of the shower there and the side side beams and stuff. This lifted up oh, four or five inches from frost. And 
it was damaging the back of the barn and it was damaging the other part of the shower. So I just had to take the whole damn thing out. Well, it already damaged both of them. So I had to take it out. So stuff that you put on the ground, if you put something on the ground and then are bracing something up like you're thinking about doing with cinder blocks under your joists and stuff, when the ground heaves, it's going to bulge the floor in your house. And it can do it quite a bit. It all depends on your frost conditions where you are. And you can find that stuff out from other people, but unless you have the whole house on blocks like that, which isn't recommended, it's just going to blow over. Um, I wouldn't put any blocks under that. I wouldn't put anything that doesn't go below the frost line. But this is what I brought this over for to start with. In order to anchor this, you have, well, you have like train ties going into the ground, but they're not going very far into the ground. I know you said you were going to put them in three feet, but you cut them into four foot sections and there was a whole lot of them sticking out of the ground. So I can't see them being anywhere near three feet underground. Uh, but whatever it is, what you should do, and if you already did the concrete and didn't show it, um, this is probably too late, but I didn't think you, it looked like you just threw rubble into the holes for now, so this is probably not too late. Somewhere beneath the ground level, drill, drill holes, maybe two holes, all the way through this, and then just put some rebar through it. Make the holes big enough so that the rebar fits through them easy. And then put some nice long rebar through those holes. And then you can put some rebar going across this way too. Just get the little rebar ties. And then once you fill the hole, you know, say this is your ground level, fill the hole with concrete and then make sure you dome the top of the concrete so the water runs off. It, especially you especially don't want it coming down so that water pools right at your at your post. Then it's just going to rot out immediately. So uh, get in there with a the trowel as it's drying and try to round that down. Uh, you're probably going to have to put quite a bit of concrete in those things. You may have to rent a mixer or get yourself a wheelbarrow or something. And maybe a few people. It's kind of hard mixing concrete and sticking it in there. So that's about it. Drill. I would drill like a hole here, a hole here, and then I would do it this way as well. It all depends on how much room you have. But don't do it too close to the bottom because it'll just split out. Um, if you don't do that, your house, because these, because your posts aren't that far into the ground, when the wind hits some big tall walls, it's going to lean your house and as soon as it passes the point, the center of gravity shifts, it's just going to pull the ones out on the windward side and tip the place over. We had up at the top of the hill, a guy bought a shed. It had no floor. It had, you put it on gravel. He had it set up, and it's just right up there. He had it set up, and wind came and rolled it all the way across his property, just destroyed it. And everything that was in the shed was still just sitting there in the middle of the field. Um, we also had the barn across the way. You can still see the tobacco shed. This is a uh, big, or used to be big tobacco country around here. That's a tobacco shed right there, the green one. But there used to be a barn right behind that. And I'll show you the pictures. Wind came, split the barn in half, and put one side on each side and threw the back of the barn off into the cornfield. Just destroyed the barn. And that was a 60 or 70 mile an hour wind. Oh, and another thing. I don't think I mentioned this. Those those round pads, I do believe I mentioned that, that you put at the bottom of this. If you have, 
if you have this with the rebar, which I would do, the rebar into or through the post will keep the house from punching down further. It doesn't matter if it's rocks or not. Once you have that house built, it's going to weigh many, 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 many tons. And the softest spot where one of your posts are, it's going to start sinking there. So your, your whole place is, you know, could shift two, three, four inches, maybe more. So get that concrete. The concrete will stop it from pushing down into the ground. Otherwise, if, you're, if your posts are deep enough in the ground like, like ours are, then you just need to put a pad on the bottom, and then they just, they just sit on that. There's no way the wind's going to tip that over. There's just way too much post in the ground. But in your case, that is not the case. So you really need to get that concrete on yours before it's too late. And for those who didn't hear in the beginning, this is just some advice for Jason Crocker, who's building a little tiny house up on a hill in Oklahoma. And he could use a little advice here and there. Come on, pup. Yeah, we got a flat on the truck, so the garbage is building up. It's one of the joys of living out in the country. You got to take your garbage to the dump yourself. And if you got a special vehicle for it like we do, and that vehicle is not running, that creates a bloody mess. Okay, I'm about to wrap this up. But what I would do, you see, you got your, your posts in the ground with rocks around them right now. Just get some stuff um, out on the sides. You can even screw some stuff to it to hold it up temporarily. And then get that digging bar in around it and get that hole deeper. And if you can, where is my pencil? If you can, make your hole bigger at the bottom you can do that with the with the digging bar by especially once you hit rocks down in there and roll them out it might get bigger at the bottom all on its own but then if it's bigger at the bottom like that and your post comes down like this and you have your rebar going across like that and then you fill this with concrete with the dome on the top and then put a little dirt over the top of that hole there's no way that house is going to tip in the wind. And it'll keep, like I said, it'll keep it from punching down into the soil and having a little bit of a leaning house. Okay, that's going to wrap it up. I got to tidy up out here. With that super cold weather, I just got some wood in. Now I got to stack that. And like I said, our stuff is building up. All this stuff needs to go to the dump, but our dump truck is on the fritz so it's kind of getting getting messy out here but it is what it is okay that's going to wrap it up make sure you subscribe click on the update icon so you receive notice when we post new videos if you have any questions or comments make sure you put it in the comment section below and if you give the video a like and or share it it helps us out greatly thanks for watching and have a great day